Are you tired of meeting expectations? If yes, well, that's a problem. And I'll tell you why. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashiva. So I had a click recently. As usual, in all these videos that I'm making, I'm sharing the powerful cognitions or the clicks that I get as I uh, listen to Swamiji's satsangs and when Swamiji is sharing the powerful knowledge, powerful cognitions and how it clicks with me and um, how I cognize it. So I had a click regarding seeking and tired of meeting expectations. So what I realized is that See, we were raised in an environment which was not necessarily the way we wanted. And uh, most of us, if not all of us in our childhood, uh, we were pushed to do things that we did not necessarily feel like doing. And or asked to perform things that we were not necessarily uh, feeling like performing. And like that, we would have built up a pain pattern of some kind of heaviness or some kind of resistance or hatred or it depends maybe in each one of us would be different but uh, this resistance towards fulfilling others expectation meeting others expectation and that incompletion that hangover uh, is still present uh, today in our inner space so uh, what i felt what i what i clicked with is like actually it is very important for for you to, in, to complete, to unclutch from this, um, from whatever incompletion or hangover you might have about um, meeting others' expectations. Why? Because when we, in, when we engage with life, automatically we will have to relate to people. When we relate to people, automatically we have to respond and automatically expectations would be there and or perceived at least, actually. Um, and, and in front of that, you know, if we have a lot of resistance and hatred, then we shut ourselves off and we all, always find ways to withdraw from the situation or avoid. But the problem is that seeking... My experience of seeking, it's a space which keeps on going. You know, it never stops. It just keeps on going. But when you have incompletions with the meeting others' expectations, you want, you want to stop. So the energy is totally different. The energy of the incompletion makes you want to stop and stagnate. The energy of seeking makes you want to keep moving forward and expand. And then we experience a conflict in our inner space. And that is why having incompletion with meeting others' expectations um, is, is damaging our seeking. It is damaging our devotion, our, um, our desire to experience the ultimate. Um, and when your desire to experience the ultimate fades, then the, the desire to exist uh, becomes less and less. And that's where, you know, we get stuck into experiencing boredom, tiredness, uh, laziness, um, and all negative energies like jealousy, anger, and all these energies which are of low frequencies. So, um, so we have to really complete with this uh, because as we engage with others, Actually, also one thing is that we don't fully realize how we are responsible for the expectations we receive or we perceive. Um, many of the expectations we feel that are there on us are not real. They are our perception. We think that this is what people are expecting from us. And that, that, that is by itself a big delusion that we need to discard um, by... Uh, by, by the same thing, by not having resistance to fulfilling expectations. When you don't have resistance to fulfill expectations, you no longer, uh, you see the reality. And you will realize that there's many of the expectations that you, think that, that you think that are on you, which are actually not on you. It is your own delusion. 
and that frees a lot of space inside of you and that space gives you space to have energy and to go and to actually fulfill the expectations that are real. And also, when we are deluded, the way we respond to life around us has a lot of unawareness. We respond to things in ways that are not the best and we give the wrong messages. We send the wrong messages to people, which leads people to form expectations towards you which are not aligned to you because you did not realize what message you sent across in the first place. So it's very important to be aware and conscious of the message you send across. And for that, you need to acknowledge the person in, in, in front of you. Like I shared in a previous video, um, you should not be insensitive of the person in front of you. When you're not insensitive uh, to the person in front of you, you will be able to send the right message across. When you send the right message across, the person will have the right expectations towards you. And because they have the right expectations, for you it will not even be perceived as an expectation because, yeah, that's what I want to do. Right? For example, if I say I want to sing and I respond to life in a way that you know I make people clear that I want to sing, then people will expect me to sing. And I mean, that's not an expectation, that's what I wanted to do in the first place, right? So everything is aligned and there's no conflicts, there's no friction and there is manifestation. So what I clicked also is that whenever there is no manifestation, it's because of this conflict. When there's a lack of alignment, because we are not aware of the way that we the, what we radiate, the energy and the way we respond to life, we are not aware of that. We send wrong signals, we then, we then get uh, the response of that wrong signals back to us as expectations from others and then we kind of collapse in front of that and want to withdraw. So the click I basically got is very simple, like we really, you really have to complete with, um, with, with the resistance to meet others' expectations and to keep the space of seeking, of devotion, of prayerfulness alive in you all the time. So yes, that's what I want to share in this video. If you have any questions, please leave, drop a comment down below, any experience, anything. Again, thanking you for sharing. And um, I have a link in the description below. The first link that is there is to become a Nikai Lasavasi. So, uh, Sri Kai Lasavasi, sorry. So Swamiji is the reviver of the greatest Indonesian. I mean, there's no Indonesian right now. So we, the, basically this is the beginning of the only Indonesian and Sri Kailasha. And if you want to have any form of spiritual support or to be updated about everything that we are doing, that Swamiji is doing, that each one of us are doing, then, uh, you know, uh, register as a Nikaila Savasi. It's free and you will just be constantly updated and to know more about um, obviously, the purpose of Sri Kalasha is to revive authentic Hinduism, authentic Sanatana Dharma. And, uh, and yeah, so inviting you to register for that. And also, there is uh, uh, soon there is Swamiji's birthday happening beginning at the end of December. And uh, Swamiji is offering, uh, Parapuja is always available, so we can offer our gratitude to the feet of the Master, which is perhaps the topic of the next video, because that's a big topic, it's very important. And this time, Swamiji says there is no fee. Um, as per the tradition, we need to give Guru Dakshina some kind of offering. So he said, you know, to the minimum, you can give one dollar, one cent, one rupee, whatever. So a basic offering. But the, basically, the Pala Puja is available to all, um, basically free of cost. Uh, he was saying that in the past, he, vol he always wanted it to be like that. But for various reasons, Sangha decided otherwise. But now, um, he's opening that uh, in the way that he wants and inviting you to register. So I'll put the link of that as well in the description below. So yes, uh, subscribe, click the bell icon, like the video, share it with your friends if you feel that this is useful and that can answer perhaps their doubt. And with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityanandam.